waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to be joined in the next segment by Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Group. And they're going to be talking about things that you can do to protect your health your family, to take control of it as an individual. Because it's not only your life now, but it's also your liberty that is being threatened by this health care bureaucracy. As we see in an article breaking on InfoWars today, a Michigan mother who is told that she has no way to opt out of a private interview uh, about sexual education with her child when she takes him to the doctor. And of course, we see in many cases that they're using your medical information to profile you. They may use it to attack you. They may use it to pry into your life, but they will also use it now to pry your children away from you, even more so than happens through the control points of government schooling. But as we were going to the break, I was talking about the 70th anniversary of D-Day, about the greatest generation and how I believe Captain America was a composite character that really kind of captured the essence of that generation, the uh, straightforward people who had sacrificed their lives uh, to protect other people, to stop bullies, as he continually says. And yet I also believe that there's another analogy to be taken from Captain America, and that is that that generation and America in general has essentially fallen asleep like Captain America did, as you see him wake up in the second Captain America movie to find that he's living in an authoritarian police state where they're going to not only watch everything that everybody does, where they don't care about giving people a trial before they attack them, where they're setting up a mechanism to essentially destroy, literally kill dissidents immediately. That's the kind of America that he wakes up to. It's time that all Americans wake up to that. And we start stop thinking about the fact that we're the good guys, the saviors of the world, and realize that we're the guys now where... The NSA lives, where these people have moved that were part of the Nazi operation. As I mentioned in the last segment, Kurt Nemo has an excellent article pointing out the banker origins of World War II. But, you know, there was another aspect of it, of course, at the end of the war. There's something called Operation Paperclip, where a lot of key scientists were brought over. Now, of course, everybody wants to talk about Werner von Braun. But there are other scientists that were, when they came over, they didn't do things that were benign, like making uh, rockets to go to the moon. Instead, they continued their human experimentation. There's an excellent book called A Terrible Mistake, The Murder of Frank Olson and the CIA's Secret Cold War Experiments. Now, the author, H.P. Uh, Alberelli, in his preface, he, he's gone back and he's gotten these, these documents that have been declassified. And it's a very, very meticulous chronicling of what happened in this guy's life. And of course, Frank Olson was someone who worked for the CIA in medical experimentations when they were doing the CIA, was doing the uh, uh, LSD experiments and that sort of thing. Uh, he told his wife and his family that he had made a terrible mistake and shortly after that, he was suicided. Now, that is interesting enough, but what I found to be fascinating about that was not only just the fact, we know that there were a lot of scientists that were brought over, but exactly what they were doing. And he chronicles that meticulously in that book. Now, he makes the mistake of thinking that, well, you know, this happened 50, 60 years ago, and fortunately now uh, the CIA is, is all better now. No, it's not. It wasn't going through the terrible twos. It's only gotten worse. It's only gotten better at what it does. We see people like William Binney, who is a technical director of the NSA, warning us that we're becoming like East Germany. And so over and over again, we see that this is a pattern of behavior. When we go to the Bilderberg Group, we see that they hatched the plans for a united Europe, doing with bankers, with currency, with financial controls like the euro, what they could not do with guns, printing the paper to take over the world. That was what they told some of the corporations that they were working with. They said, imagine yourself as dictators of Europe. 
Well, we don't have to imagine anymore. Not when we see Goldman Sachs bankers replacing elected politicians, democratically elected politicians. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Anthony Gucciardi and Dr. Group. How can you take control of your health and your privacy? Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from seven to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. All right, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm joined in studio with Anthony Gucciardi. And we're going to talk to Anthony as well as to Dr. Group about what you can do to take control of your individual health. In other words, to take control of your life, because if you don't have health uh, and this medical system that they're creating, not only pries into your life, as we've been talking about with these news articles that are, that are surfacing today, but of course, it also can destroy your life, as we've seen with these articles about the VA system, the waiting lists that are, that are going on forever, assuring you that you have health care, even though you really don't. I mean, that, what's happening at the VA is, is really a metaphor for the larger Obamacare system, isn't it? It is. And I wanted to get into a few key news pieces that kind of tie into what you were talking about earlier. You were talking about the experts doing the research historically and seeing that we're at a pinnacle of some type of collapse or catastrophic mm -hmm. event. And you were making parallels to World War II, World War I, uh, even the Civil War. Now, my theory is that that might happen. We might actually have World War III. It's very possible looking at the geopolitical situation. But imagine if the info war is the pinnacle of this trigger. Right. And if we look at some of these news pieces we're about to get to here in a second, we get to the understanding that things are so bad now that even some of the government officials are pulling back and speaking out. 
And what that can do is it can trigger a radical transformation. It could be good, it could be bad, but overall, they will systematically attempt to stop the transformation. And I believe, and I agree, 2007, 2008, that was kind of the beginning. Mm -hmm. What if we are at the pinnacle right now of the info war, at the pinnacle of the intellectual war? And looking at these stories that's here. That's true. Let me, before you go into those stories, when they looked at this, they, they pointed out going all the way back to the 1450s that it doesn't always result in war. But it always results in a massive transformation, a, a complete remaking of society. Right. Exactly. And so that it could be that it's an info war. But one thing for sure, I believe, is that it is going to be a massive transformation of society. And so the question is, who's going to transform it? Are we going to win the info war? Are we going to transform it into one that is a more open, more free society? Or is, are we going to descend into this surveillance state, this police state that they're trying to create? That is the exact question. And overall, I think if you look at, look historically with the kings and uh, battling each other and everything, it's always been a physical kind of uh, aggressive attack. Now, the biggest form of change, just looking at this, I wanted to talk about how one comic in a Japanese comic that was very popular um, ended up changing the whole dichotomy of the Fukushima, uh, Fukushima situation in Japan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even make sense to kill people over, uh, over actually you know, disseminating information anymore. The new biggest tool is not a siege weapon. It's not a catapult. It is online media. It's the biggest thing. Why would you even choose to go to war if you can destroy a nation or anything using information? That is the answer. Mm -hmm. And just look at this. Some city leaders want to stop treating water with fluoride. That's happened for a while, but this is now in the mainstream. And this coincides with the fact that a top medical journal labels fluoride a neurotoxin just this week. So it's all happening. And this is all in the mainstream media, and it has been over and over time, time again, but this is so in your face now that even Russia is coming forward and telling the UN that they need, they need a GMO watchdog. And Russia's been at the forefront in some of this, really calling the United States out, not even because Russia cares necessarily well, about some of these things, but just because the United States is behind so much of this evil yes. that it's advantageous for them to shine the light on the United States, which happens to just be advantageous for humanity as a whole. So it's an interesting situation with that. There's a lot more awareness of that in Europe than there is here. I mean, I was I talked to people in Copenhagen and they were talking about how they'd had over a thousand people at the march against Monsanto there because they were concerned about GMO. I talked to one guy privately and of course they've never fluoridated the water in Denmark. One guy said he's trying to wake up his friends. He listens to Infowars all the time. He said, when I tell them that they're fluoridating the water in the United States, they don't believe me. They think I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist. I mean, we get exactly the opposite. When we tell people in America, Look at the studies that show how bad this is for you. The health effects of fluoride, they laugh at it. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. Whereas in Europe, they look at it and they know how bad it is. They can't believe that our government could get away with putting that in our water. Well, let me just tell you a, a good example of how bad this has gotten with the denial, the overall insanity, and then actually a good story I want to share as well. But read this where it says that um, the top priority of this group for Russia, the UN GMO Council, is to scrutinize how consuming GMOs would affect human health in the long run. So they're just saying, hey, we should actually look at how mm -hmm. these genetically modified organisms affect our health before we taint the entire world food supply with it. And it's like, oh my goodness, how could you even possibly think that? You know, No, but we can't wait because see, it's all about Monsanto and these corporations making profits. And if we take our time and look at the effects of what they're creating, then they lose their patent. So they got to rush it out to us without any testing so they can make the most amount of money. Well, what's <laughs> also really funny is they know that people aren't buying it anymore. So they're going around patenting all these different seed types. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is the organic farms are being run out entirely because they're, they're going after the organic farms for their patenting because they know what's happening. But let me share with you a good story. So I was at a restaurant the other day in Austin and our server was this woman and nothing against people with tattoos, but she was covered in tattoos. Uh, you know, very short haircut and, and looked like somebody that was your average trendy that would absolutely hate Alex or anything like that. And she goes, hey, are, are you Anthony Cucciardi? I said, yes, I am. She goes, I love Alex, you know, but that wasn't the key thing. That happens all the time. What the key thing was is she explained to me, she goes, yeah, I used to be a huge fan of Obama. You know, I still used to consider myself an ancient type of Democrat. But how can you go along with this system when it's so disgustingly corrupted? How can you even even for a semblance of a second, think that this is real. And then the person next to her, who also looked like somebody that was, you know, typically would be a total trendy, was like, 
No, I completely agree. She's like, I'm not saying I'm Republican or Democrat, but she's like, I cannot align myself with anything these days that's in the news, which is predominantly Democrat.